Well, you saw the demo, and now here's the machine that produced all those effects. Uh, won one of these for quite a while. It's an Amiga 4000 040, which means it has a 68040 CPU card in it. Uh, some of these came with a 68030. Uh, not much to look at on the outside, but on the inside. Down there is the 68040 CPU card that could be upgraded to a 68060 or power PC, although the upgrades are quite expensive. Amiga 4000s used off the shelf IDE hard drives, and this is just your typical Seagate drive. It's 6.4 gigabytes, which is a ton for an Amiga. And yeah, that's a CD recorder. I don't know how useful the recording part is in an Amiga. Apparently there is software, but I really haven't researched it. Here's the Video Toaster card. This is a Video Toaster 4000 card. This card was released in conjunction with the four, Amiga 4000. And uh, has a proper backplate on it. The older cards used a proprietary backplate for the Amiga 2000 or 3000's video slot. Down there we can see a standard SIM memory. It's got 16 megabytes of fast RAM and 2 megabytes of chip RAM. And of course the infamous battery has been clipped out a long time ago so there's no corrosion on the board which is a good thing. I guess we'll take a look around the back. Got our standard parallel serial ports. Believe it or not this machine has a external floppy port on it. Over there are the toaster inputs, one through four, along with the program and preview out monitors. And this card used to, this card, this machine used to have a video toaster flyer card in it, which has been removed, and it looks like it also had a DPS brand time-based corrector card in it. You can see the sticker's still here. Of course we have our keyboard and RGB monitor output along with our audio output, which on all Amigas, believe it or not, is RCA out. A bit nicer than your typical PC fare with the headphone jack, although there are some PC cards that use RCA wires. And over here we just have the mouse, joystick, light pen ports as they call them. In terms of slots, well, this is a pretty cramped case, so it's fairly limited. The video toaster goes into a dedicated video slot, and it actually blocks the next slot space above it. Uh, these are passive ISA slots. They just get power and ground connected. If you get a PC bridge board, you can actually use these for peripherals. And these are Zoro 3 slots. They're 32-bit expansion slots specific to the Amiga. So... Enough of me yapping about the machine, let's start it up. And this is the keyboard I picked up on eBay. This actually uses Cherry MX Black key switches in it. It's a nice little keyboard. And I have to say, these 4000s boot up a bit quicker than the 2000s or 3000s that I've used in the past. Uh, this machine's running Workbench 3.0 and Kickstart ROM 3.0. Pretty standard fare for a 4000. There's actually three partitions here. Workbench just has the system software and it looks like the previous owner divided the Toaster 3.1 and 4.2 software onto separate partitions. Uh, this is Amiga Explorer. When you use a serial cable, you can actually explore the hard drive of the machine on a PC with the appropriate software on that end. And of course, as, this, as I went over before, it has 16 megabytes of fast RAM and 2 megabytes of graphics RAM. So, open up the toaster software. And it does its little blinky genlock thing. Although there is no input hooked up, so it'll be free running right now. Now, first thing you might notice about the screen is well, where are all the transitions? Well, 
the toaster 4.2 system software is more geared towards nonlinear editing. So this is kind of a bin where you put your transitions and your resources like your frame stores or your character generator graphics. But down here is the same as the older to toaster software. And here you can go into the, all the different stuff like the CG or Here you could type in your titles and stuff. And go back to the switcher. And of course you have toaster paint. Where you can just draw and stuff. Eh, whatever. And one nice thing about the Toaster 4.2 software is it's designed for the AGA chipset Amigas. So, like for example, Toaster Paint actually takes advantage of the higher resolutions that you can achieve on this machine when editing or painting or whatever. So, it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's see. in here you can get your transitions and effects and stuff and I actually went through these screens already you saw them in the other video these are just the wipes so we can go back to the switcher I suppose I should show that when you're in here you can just drag what you need up here for your project now if I had a flyer card installed I could also add video clips up here in this area if I wanted to, but I don't, so no video clips. But I can also put stills up here, which I can use without the flyer card, and create something akin to a PowerPoint slideshow. So with this selected, it'll actually do the transition. You can see the line there. Let's do the sword one, it's fancier. You see the sword go up. Now that, that would actually appear on the video if I had any input sources connected, which I don't. So let's go out. Now there are some people who don't like this interface for live production, so thankfully you could load up the older classic video toaster software. Of course, this one, oddly enough, uses the fancy Toaster 4000 logo. As you can see, it has the classic toaster effects layout up here. Now these little headphones here indicate that this transition actually has sound. So I, I know the older toaster software didn't actually support that. So and of course you have your, your normal switcher here and your sub programs over here. So and and here you have to actually go into the setup screen to quit or get into chroma effects. Do you want to shut down the video toaster? Yes, I do. So, that's just about it. I mean, I really don't have any other software on this Amiga besides the toaster that I could show you. So, but you know, I've waited 15 years for one of these, and I finally got a hold of it. So, hopefully, I'll use this in the future. And let me tell you, if you have a blog TV show, this is a good tool to have. Hint, hint. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video and leave a comment.